Hi there, my name is Kay Moon, and this is a video about the full moon in Cancer of 2020, occurring on December 29th, 2020 at 1028 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, if you're not, please check your local um, time. Please check a time zone converter for your local time. It's lovely to be back with you guys again. Thank you again for all of your patience. This has been a period of significant change and transformation for all of us. And as life would have it, there was much to be attended to in the 3D world for me. So um, I appreciate your patience and I'm very grateful for you tuning in to this video about this full moon. This full moon will provide a bit of a build on the Sagittarius new moon, which was the new moon that preceded this full moon. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you go back and listen to that, then listen to this in order um, as some of the energies kind of carry over because that uh, particular new moon was so significant. Now, as we walk into the full moon in Cancer, I want to just pause and make a quick announcement. On December 28th, the day preceding this full moon, I will be doing a live interview with two people who are very near and dear to my heart, uh, Ella and Michaela, about a technology that they've been using to help twins and the Ascending Soul Collective continue to grow and to clear their energy and to deepen the connection and identify blockages in the connection because the technology that they're using operates for distance healing. We're going to go in depth about how it works, why it works the way that it does. And I'm going to give you a really formal introduction or thorough introduction to it this week, um, the week of December 28th. And then the following week, there will be a live healing for twins on the channel on Monday, uh, December 12th. So please mark your calendar. Each of the, both the interview on December 28th and then the live healing that they're going to do will be on Monday, December 12th. Uh, Monday, January 4th, both of them at 12 noon p.m. Eastern time. So if you're not on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. It'd be awesome to have you all there live. I think you're going to love this technology. It's personally helped me quite a bit, and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys what it can do and how it can assist you as well. Okay, so let's dive into the full moon in Cancer energy. Uh, this particular full moon um, has a sextile to Uranus. So let's just call these things out or highlight them in the chart as I call them out. Here's the full moon here standing straight across from our sun, which is what full moons often do, always do. Um, they stand across from the sun. Here is the moon. The moon is sextile Uranus. Here's Uranus. There's our moon. But sextiling Uranus, um, the moon is also sextiling Lilith because Uranus and Lilith stand together. Okay. There is something special about this full moon because it's really indicative of, as I mentioned earlier, kind of in the previous uh, new moon video, the Sagittarius new moon video, there is a hearkening to change and the energy of change being on the horizon. And this particular full moon speaking in harmony with Uranus is calling that change forward in very clear and certain terms. The thing about the Lilith energy that's influencing this new moon and Uranus here is that the Lilith energy wants this change on her terms. She wants to have this change, but she doesn't just want to have it any old kind of way or change for change's sake. Lilith energy is very specific in the way that it wants change to occur. It's like, nope, I need this, 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 and this. And if it's not going to happen this way, I'm actually really not interested in whatever you're selling. So the Lilith energy here is saying, hey, 
let's go ahead and create some change. Let's go ahead and shake some things up. Let's move in a new direction, but it has to be in this specific way. And so I like that because it really is bringing an empowering energy to all of us here on planet earth saying, manifest the changes that you want to have in your life at this time. Be specific, be clear, call it out of the ether, place it into the world. So that's a really interesting energy here. We also have this particular full moon squaring the shaman's asteroid and squaring Chiron as it opposes the sun. And we have the sun speaking in harmony with that Uranus Lilith conjunction as well. And we have the sun making those same squaring aspects to Chiron and the shaman's asteroid. This particular energy is what we would call a grand cross when we have uh, energies that are 180 degrees opposition to one another, forming 90 degree angles to each other. This grand cross energy with the involvement of Chiron and the shaman's asteroid is talking about paying attention to where we have had to learn things the hard way specifically in the arena of our relationships, not just romantically, but also in business and in family. Where have we had to learn things the hard way? Where would we not like to repeat that? Because at this time, we have the opportunity to take a quantum leap forward. We have the opportunity to shut down cycles that have been compromising us. And I spoke a lot about that in the video of the Sagittarius new moon. So if you haven't listened, pause this, listen to that, come back. This particular energy is what's allowing us to shut down cycles that no longer serve and work for us and to get really clear about what those are so that we can transcend them once and for all. This energy gives us the opportunity to look for ourselves at where we have been participating in our own demise. And this is all of what 2020 has been for everyone. It's given us that 2020 vision. Aha, this is how I need to change so that my life can move forward in the way that I really want it. The Uranian energy that's a part of this full moon is giving us a lot of the external world breaking up of stagnancy, I should say, where things have been really stuck. The Uranian energy is starting to break apart those fixtures in our life so that we can move forward. So if you're noticing things at this full moon in Cancer that have been permanent fixtures in your life starting to come apart, it's actually for your benefit at this period of time because of the way Uranus is harmoniously placed both to the sun and to the moon, it's meant to assist you in making space for the new beginning that's here. But the question you have to answer before you can take advantage of that new beginning is what have I learned? What has 2020 taught me and shown me, 2019 taught me and shown me that I have to personally change in order to get this new beginning to unfold in my life? And the reason why this is so personal, the reason why this is so much about our personal accountability is because of the placement of Chiron in the sign of the self that's Aries, and the placement of the shaman's asteroid, they all lined up to configure around the shaman's asteroid in the sign of partnership. So it's really about the mirroring that our relationships have given to us about what it is we need to do to grow. The definition of insanity, as I'm sure most of you have probably heard, is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Likewise, if you've been operating on the same patterns and still getting the same result with certain people in your life, this is an energy that's showing you it's time to change and switch up the way you're operating in those connections. Family work and romantic, those are the areas of life really covered by these signs that these planets are sitting in. There is a lot of tension in the sky. There's a lot of squaring energy going on at this particular lunation. And 
I like it. I like it. Normally squares and the tension they provide can make us incredibly uncomfortable, but because there's such a high placement of planetary energy inside cardinal signs and inside earth signs, this is giving us that push that we need to take initiative. That's cardinal energy to change our 3d world. That's earth signs. In addition, we have um, under the light of this particular full moon, we've got an energy of Neptune square Venus. This is cluing us in to where our greatest disappointments have been in the world of love and connection. Disappointments have been in the world of things that we value. This can also mean love at a distance, love overseas, especially because Venus is hanging out in the sign of long distance travel. Venus, or sorry, Neptune is sitting in Pisces, a water sign. Disappointments in love, likewise, deception can really show up here. But it's interesting because deceptive energy isn't going to last very long. It's actually going to move relatively quickly. So um, this is a good thing, but it's showing up to help us understand where have we, under the light of this full moon, been turning a blind eye, trying not to look, pretending we didn't want to know. Those kinds of things are going to start to get louder and louder in our consciousness as we move between now and February. And in February, it's almost like the lights go on and everyone is home. The pink elephant can no longer be ignored. What it is, is what it is. And now you know. So look for that coming up in February. We'll talk about the energy as we get there. There's also an energy of Mars square Pluto in addition to that Neptune square Venus. Here's our friend Mars up here at 26 degrees Aries. We've got Pluto down here at 24 degrees Capricorn. Mars square Pluto is definitely not an easy energy. This energy at its worst is very passive aggressive and also just straight up aggressive. It's a willingness to do whatever it takes to get your way, to, to stoop to any level, to do anything, to, you know, like nothing is beneath you with this energy. Likewise, if you want to utilize it in the light, this is supreme motivation to overcome some of the fears that have trapped and stopped you from manifesting the life that you want. So you can use this energy either way. Those who are unconscious, you'll see them utilizing it in the latter way or the former way. Those who are conscious, you can utilize this in the latter way. This Mars is also squaring our friend Saturn and the conjunction Saturn has with Jupiter. And this is pull, providing a bit of like a push pull, start, stop, a bit of a like, got to take two steps forward, pause, then another two steps, pause, a slow unfoldment of radical change because Jupiter and Saturn are now both sitting in the sign of radical change. That's Aquarius energy here. And because they're both sitting there squaring Aries, the Mars and Aries energy, it's about personally, that's Aries energy, you yourself, personally being accountable for the steps forward for change that you're making. We also have um, Jupiter conjunct this Saturn energy, which I talked about extensively inside of the Sagittarius full moon videos so, or new moon videos, I highly recommend you pause, listen, come back, because I'm not going to go as in depth with that this time. But that energy is going to mark the entire next 90 to 120 days. That energy of Jupiter conjunct Saturn is really going to show us where we're trying to make change and how we need to do that in a stepwise fashion so we don't show our, shoot ourselves in the foot. Because Jupiter is conjunct Chiron, but also sextile this Saturn, in addition to squaring this Uranus and sextiling Juno, while also squaring the creation goddess, this energy or uh, trining the, uh, trining, uh, sorry, trining the shaman's asteroid, 
um, this whole thing is giving us the, it's giving us a gift or sorry, it's not trying to trying to challenge the asteroids, squaring the creation goddess. There we go. And now I have it correct. This whole configuration with Jupiter and Saturn kind of in the middle of it all there, this whole configuration is talking about leveraging the journey we've been on, the insights we've learned, the wounds we've experienced to catalyze ourselves toward our tr- like our true future, what it is we really want. This is really an energy that's showing us where we need to leverage and harness what we what we have learned about ourselves from those wounds, learned about other people and the people in our life, and then learned about where we want to grow. This energy is helping us facilitate a brand new beginning by showing us what doors are closed and where we never want to go again. This is a bit of a final push energy. And this final push energy is trying to usher us through the threshold of change. It's trying to usher us into our newest chapter. But in order to have this new chapter, the high cardinality of this particular energy, the high earth energy of this particular energy of the new moon, the full moon, it's asking us to let go. It's asking us to take initiative. It's asking us to let some of the pieces fall where they're going to fall focus on what you need to do to initiate and catalyze that new beginning by your own two hands. So it's a very exciting kind of energy, this full moon. It's the last full moon of 2020. Milk the lessons for what you can, because this particular full moon, once you've got those lessons, it's not like the path forward accelerates actually extremely quickly for everyone on planet Earth. There's a a bit of a quickening that's coming forward now that Jupiter and Saturn have moved into the sign of Aquarius. There's kind of an energy of change. Now change again. Okay, now change directions a third time. There's an energy of needing to push forward with change in spite of all of the things that you've experienced that have held you back before. So if you're kind of sitting on the side of the road, waiting for something to happen, nothing happens unless you move yourself. When you move, one of my movement teachers was famous for saying, when you move, it will move. If you're waiting for something in your life to shift, you're going to have to shift in order for that thing to shift. And this particular full moon is really talking about the necessity of getting into action, starting to calibrate your new life forward by taking the difficult steps that need to be taken, letting the pieces fall, trusting that source has your back and moving forward no matter what. So very exciting times, very exciting energies. Uh, I would love to be able to read for you sometime in uh, the beginning of January, that first week. Look for the invitation on my website to sign up for a reading. The readings will be open again then. And if you're on my private list, um, you can definitely, you'll definitely be notified sooner than everyone else. So sign up for that if you are not signed up for it yet. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. Please subscribe as guidance like this will follow every new and full moon. Thank you so much. Take care and bye for now.